Sorry I'm late. <laughs> you didn't um, miss your slot. You're just perfect that way. I was at a meeting. So it's taking care of sitting. I'm not really sure why I'm here. I've listened to a lot of people's discussions, including my partner. I don't know if she's still here, but it was a good discussion. She did a nice job. And so did Dr. Coleman. They call the surgeon in when there's trauma. All right? Look around. This community is in trauma. All right? I wore a mask for 38 years. I've been a physician for just that long. Everything I do, put a mask on. And I can tell you, when I put that N95 mask on and just stood there and operated, I got headaches. I got headaches. I'm used to wearing masks. I'm not even trying to do it when I'm running or playing in the gym or all the other stuff. These masks, you want to stop the virus? The example of it is like trying to stop a mosquito with a chain link fence. Good luck. Right? Yes, I sneeze. These masks are designed to blow shit behind me. Not a little. That's all they're designed for. So I'm still not sure why I'm here. But I'm pissed. I take care of people. I, you know what this is about? This is about fear. This is about fear. I'm going to say it right now. This is about death. Everybody around here is scared that a kid may die in this community. And I'm terrified of it too. But I've done the guy there who pronounced the kids when they die. We all remember, well, I'm not going to say her name, an 18 month little girl who got hit by a car. Her mom was a nurse. Maggie was her primary doctor. And we tried to keep her going as long as we could. But it was time. And I pronounced her. Because nobody else around could. Because why? Because it's not about our science. You can find anything you want about science. You can go read any. I can prove either side of this anytime. Looking anywhere I want, I can find the data that'll show what you think is right. You heard that from people out here. Social media, you heard it. Tom Ruth did an excellent job on growing social media thing just the way. So what do I do when I have to make life and death decisions? Because effectively, that's what you're being asked to decide. Somewhere along in this part, you're going to have to decide, and your decision is going to make a life or death decision for some kid, or an adult, or my, like my partner said, her kid's uncle. Because that kid might have brought that to that uncle, and he got it, and he died. We all are going to die. It's a given. You cannot change it. Who do you believe? What is your foundation? This city has 17 Lutheran churches <laughs> in its environment. You can't turn without seeing a church. Detroit, Michigan, you can turn without seeing a liquor store. <laughs> I am blessed to be in this community, as are all of you. But now you're put in a position to make a decision. How do I make my decisions? With my experience of 35, 38 years, with what I've seen. You know what the real magic is of what surgery does? You take, and one of you might need my services tonight because chances are you're all going to have an ulcer. <laughs> and when you perforate your ulcer, you're going to call, and I'm going to show up, and I'm going to give you information real quick. And I'm the expert. I'm going to tell you what you need. And 99% of the time, you're going to believe me. Most of them hurt, so they have no choice. But these people are hurt, and they have no choice. They're not sure where to look. They're not looking at you to make a decision. How do I make those decisions? I pray. I pray on the way in. Any one of you shows up tonight, I'm praying on the way in. When I walk in, I pray for you. I pray with you. I pray for the team. I ask for guidance. Fixing your ulcer? Well, this is the part I'm supposed to know. I don't take any responsibility for that. I just put the two sides together. Okay, just do this little strand. Anybody do it? Monkeys can do it. <laughs> Monkeys do it in Detroit. <laughs> God heals you. He mends that together within 24 hours. It's water tight and won't leak anymore. I take you through those places, but I get a print. I'm a tool by the maker. Look to the maker. Do what you need to do for the people who have entrusted this to you. Put your 
yourself in their shoes. I don't know how you put yourself in that woman who's, whose child has to wear a mask, yet can't do her physical therapy or her speech therapy. I don't know what you would do that decision. You mandate this across the board, that's a tough place to go. I would suggest, and it's just a suggestion. Be very bad. Come real close to that and find out what you want you to do. And then I would ask you to say, who does God put in charge of these kids? Their parents. Right? God gave each one of these kids to their child. I'm sorry, each one of these kids to their parents. And they speak for them. They may be wrong, they may be dumb, they may be perfect in their decisions, but it's still their responsibility. It's not yours. God gave it to them. Honor their wishes. Either side of the fence. And then let them decide if they want to go to school here or not. They want to go to another school and pass out, so be it. If they want to stay here and not learn that, so be it. Take care of the people. Hey, what's on here? God wins. And a lot of these people sound bigger consent. They do not hear consent. It's against the Constitution. But that's another story. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.